Two weeks after five people were killed during an expedition to the Titanic wreckage site, the company who owned the submersible has halted its upcoming trips. On Thursday, OceanGate announced on its website that it is suspending all exploration and commercial operations. The company was founded in 2009 and offers tourists the chance to travel on submersibles into the depths of the ocean for an up-close look at the Titanic shipwreck more than 12,000 feet beneath the ocean surface. The move to suspend operations comes after its Titan submersible was destroyed in a, quote, catastrophic implosion during its deep-sea voyage to the Titanic on June 18. Five men, including OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush, were on board. Several crews worked for days to find any signs of the vessel, but five days later on June 22, OceanGate shared a statement obtained by NBC News saying they believed all passengers had been lost. Later that day, the Coast Guard confirmed that they discovered debris from the missing vessel on the seafloor. An ROV, or remote-operated vehicle, from the vessel Horizon Arctic discovered the tail cone of the Titan submersible approximately 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic on the seafloor. The ROV subsequently found additional debris in consultation with experts from within the Unified Command, the debris is consistent with the catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. Upon this determination, we immediately notified the families. On behalf of the United States Coast Guard and the entire Unified Command, I offer my deepest condolences to the families. I can only imagine what this has been like for them, and I hope that this discovery provides some solace during this difficult time. Additionally, we've been in close contact with the British and French Consuls General to ensure that they are fully apprised and that their concerns are being addressed. The outpouring of support in this highly complex search operation has been robust and immensely appreciated. We are grateful for the rapid mobilization of experts on the undersea search and rescue, and we thank all of the agencies and personnel for their role in the response. We're also incredibly grateful for the full spectrum of international assistance that's been provided. The ROVs will remain on scene and continue to gather information. Again, our most heartfelt condolences go out to the loved ones of the crew. Ed Casano, the crew leader of the team who found remains of the Titan submersible, nearly broke down in tears on June 30th as he looked back at the moment the rescue effort turned into a recovery operation. Shortly after arriving on the seafloor, we discovered the debris of the Titan submersible. Of course, we continued to document the site, and by 12 o'clock, sadly, a rescue turned into a recovery. I have to apologize for still being mobilized. A lot of emotions, people are tired. During this period, upon arriving on site, we have to point out that the U.S. Coast Guard Incident Command reached out to the families of the Titan crew upon our discovery of the bird. A very important communication. He added that although he is very proud of his team's recovery efforts, he is saddened by the situation. I think there's a lot to learn. Um, I think. We're very proud of the performance of our system. It performed. Our team performed. It, it actually achieved the mission at hand. We were very saddened we couldn't recover a viable cell. But beyond that, the system performed. Down the road, there are certainly things that we'll think about, but we haven't had time to do The press conference was two days after debris from the Titan was brought to shore. In the photos, crew members are seen lifting scraps off the vessel onto a port. 
Some of the remnants included the nose cone with its distinctive circular window. Titanic director James Cameron weighed in on the tragedy for the first time on June 22nd and emphasized the diving community's emphasis on safety and pressure testing of vessels. I've been made 33 dives. I actually calculated that I've spent more time on the ship than the captain did back in the day. Um, and of course, uh, you know, as a submersible designer myself, I designed and built a sub to go to the deepest place in the ocean, three times deeper than Titanic. So I understand the the engineering problems associated with with building this type of type of vehicle and all the safety protocols that you have to go through. And uh, I think the, that what Bob said, because I was watching, uh, is absolutely critical for people to to really get the the, the take home message from this, from from our effort here is deep submergence diving is a mature art from the early 60s where there were you know a few accidents nobody was killed in the in the deep submergence until now is more time than between kitty hawk and the lot and the, the flight of the first 747 so if we haven't improved over that period of time and you know we, we have improved drastically over that period of time and uh, the the uh, certification protocols that all other deep submergence vehicles except this one that carry passengers especially paying passengers all over the world in tropical waters uh deep coral reefs other wreck sites and so on um the the safety record is is the gold standard absolutely not only no fatalities but no major incidents requiring all of these assets to converge to a site of course that's the nightmare that we've all lived with you know since uh, since all of us entered this this um, this field of deep exploration we live with it in the back of our minds but because implosion as bob described it such a violent event um is first and foremost in our minds the pressure boundary which is what they call the the hull of the sub that the people go inside is obviously first and foremost in our minds as engineers and we spend so much time and energy on that and we use all the computerized tools available today finite element analysis uh we worked on our sphere for our for our deep deep vehicle that went to the challenger deep for over three years just in the computer before we even made the thing and then of course we we pressure tested it over and over and over uh and so on so you know, this is a mature art, and many people in the community were very concerned about this sub. And a number of, of uh, you know, of the top players in the in the uh, deep submergence engineering community even wrote letters to the company saying that what they were doing was too experimental to carry passengers and that needed to be certified and, and so on. The filmmaker also told NBC News that he saw a connection between the tragedy and the actual Titanic sinking. I'm struck by the similarity of the Titanic disaster itself, where the captain was repeatedly warned about ice ahead of his ship, and yet he steamed at full speed into an ice field on a moonless night, and many people died as a result. And for a very similar tragedy where warnings went unheeded to take place at the same exact site, with all the diving that's going on all around the world, uh, I, I think it's just astonishing. It's really quite surreal.